Amid the onslaught of westernization and the heavy influence of Christianity in the 1800s, the traditional pieces of the Khasis were at the edge of a precipice, one nudge, and the identity would be lost forever. This was when 16 Khasi youths came together and formed the Seng Khasi on November 23, 1899 to protect their indigenous religion, culture, and unique language. In this episode of Shillong's Iconic Structures, we are featuring the Ying Seng, official building of the Seng Khasi and its instrumental role in upholding the traditions and culture of the Khasis. Seng Khasi translates as the organization of the Khasi people. Located in Maokar, one of the busiest and highly populated areas in Shillong, the Ying Seng with pitch roofing, a fluttering Seng Khasi flag and a rooster atop invariably exudes a traditional aura. Bereft of greenery due to its location, the structure is visible from afar as the premises itself boasts of structures like the monolith, something that every Khasi is familiar with. Let's dive into the history of the Seng Khasi. In the face of the British incursion, 16 educated Khasi men understood that sans culture and religion, the identity of the Khasis would be weakened, which prompted them to form the Seng Khasi in 1899 under the guidance of Babu Jibon Roy Myrom, also known as the father of modern Khasis. Spearheading this movement was 16 young men, Rash Mohan Roy Nongrum, Chandranath Roy J. Dukhar Sawyan, Upardon Dukhar, Mohan Roy Ranja, Ruby Singh Swear, Borton Nyuta, Raibon Singh, Nalak Singh Yangbla, Joshan Taryang, Sed Singh Dakar, Ramcharan Dimpep, Robert Dakar, Rajin Shan Marbanyang, Nadon Roy Dingdo, Rotan Muniwar, and Indra Muni Jurwa. The Senkhasi also received tremendous support from the Brahmo Savaj, the monotheistic reformist movement of the Hindu religion, which in the late 19th century had already made its presence felt in most parts of Khasi Hills. In the initial years, members of the Senkhasi were permitted to use the Samaj Hall in Maukar. It was not until 1902 that the Senkhasi got its permanent building at the present site. In the report of the Senkhasi of the year 1902, it was recorded that they got the house at the cost of 350 rupees, but since it was in a dilapidated condition, they had to spend 60 rupees for repairing it. The money was paid by Babu Jibon Roy. Small and wooden in structure, the building was spacious enough at that time to accommodate the members, but as the number grew over the years, a need for a bigger space was felt and it was in 1959-60 when a new building was constructed, part wooden and part concrete. The structure that stands at present is a four-storied red and white building. The design of the front portion is similar to an Assam type house with the rooster's illustration visible on every floor. The top floor houses, the Sengpani Hall and an LP school with wooden floors, ceilings and windows. Faithful would gather every Sunday at 1.30pm at the Sengpani Hall to impart teachings on the Seng Khasi and its philosophy. The hall with long wooden benches arranged on both sides has a small podium in the front where the elders of the Seng congregate. The walls are filled with pictures of the founders and boards filled with write-ups of the main tenets of the Seng displayed at the center, serving as a reminder of what the faith stands for. These include Tip Brio Tip Blay, which translates to know and connect with the divinity within in order to know and connect with God, Tip Kur Tip Ka, knowing one's own matrilineal cognates and patrilineal agnate lines, and Kama Yaka Hok, strive for the truth. It is very, very important uh, to actually know one's roots and see in, in the Khasi society belief and culture are one and the same. Our, our culture emanates out of our, our belief system and our religious practices. So it is very very important to keep these two actually intact and we need to preserve and protect them because otherwise without these, then the whole identity of being a Khasi, of the Khasi people also like gets, gets diluted and gets destroyed, yeah. The second floor includes the main hall where all the rites, rituals and cultural events are conducted during important events. 
The hall, which once had wooden floors but was later replaced by cement, includes a large open space big enough to house a badminton court and a stage in the front. The conference room and the office of the Seng are located just below the main hall and the ground floor accommodates the utility rooms. Behind the main building is a small house where elders who conduct the prayers and rituals sit and perform their duties. Adjacent to the main building is a two-storied Assam type structure where outstation caretakers stay and next to it is another dilapidated wooden house which was recently purchased to create room for expansion of the Senkhasi building. The history of the Senkhasi is incomplete without mentioning its different religious festivals. The Shat Sukhman Siem, Dance of the Joyful Hearts held in April each year, the Senkutsnem Foundation Day held annually on 23rd November, the first celebration being in 1900, and the annual pilgrimage to Lum Sokpetneng, Navel of Heaven, held on the first Sunday of February each year. Apart from this, the Senkhasi also hosts an archery competition one week before the Senkutsnem at Polo Grounds where archers from across the Khasi Hills participate. Did you know that the history of the Shat Sukhman Siem is as old as the organization itself? It is a thanksgiving dance known by many names in the past like Kashat Usip or a dance initiated by Babu Jibon Roy's son Sib Charan Roy, Kashat Shira, Kashat Sujin or Shat Kanthei Dance of the Girls. When the venue was moved from Maokhar to Limpung, Waking and Jayao in 1911, the dance became known as Kashat Sukhman Siem or Kashat Waking. It would interest you to know that the Senghasi Higher Secondary School, one of the oldest schools in Meghalaya, had its humble beginnings in Senghasi Hall in 1921. The school is now located at Jayao near the Limpung Waking. The Senghasi College too started as an evening college at Senghasi Hall in Maokhar in 1973 until it was moved to Limpung Waking in 1985. Are you aware that the red and white flag with a rooster at the center was adopted in 1913? The red background signifies courage, the circle in white stands for the fundamental belief of the Khasis, and the rooster symbolizes the ancient culture and tradition of the Khasis, the harbinger of light. With over 300 branches spread across the Khasi Hills, the Seng Khasi is growing in number but population-wise, the people professing the indigenous faith are now a minority, accounting for only 7-8% to of the total population in Meghalaya. We, ha we have given representation after representation since 2008-9, till this day. And uh, we have met also many uh, people, including the chairman of the Minorities Commission, the Minister of Minorities. And we have given representation and we hope that uh, the Minorities Commission and the Ministry of Minority Affairs will take a favorable dis decision in this regard. Meghalaya boasts of its cultural uniqueness, its colorful festivals, its myths and folklores, all of which define the origin and identity of the indigenous tribes of the state. Credit goes to organizations like the Senkhasi for their continuing effort to remain an unshakable pillar against external forces that seek to dilute the customary rights and practices of the indigenous tribe. Senkhasi is really, really important for us to work very, very hard in protection and preservation of the uh, indigenous faith and indigenous culture. If we don't uh, do this, then I'm afraid our entire Khasi people will forget all their roots. So that's, that's the main uh, task for Senkhasi now, is to work harder and work stronger to build and to help people understand their roots as well as their culture in a deeper form so that they can live as a unique race in this entire world. Yeah. Mm -hmm.